some time and talk. So maybe Margot can. Ba okay, barely uh, discernible is the Gibson headstock. This is a 1957 Gibson ES175, the first year for the humbucking pickup when they figured out how to get an electric guitar to uh, to um, emit without a buzz and all of that. So um, this is the first year. It's a coveted pickup in this guitar. The pickup is worth more than the guitar, pretty much, because this was the, the great classic pickup that they used in the Les Paul guitars from 1958 through, or actually 57, through 1960, but the 58s through 60s were the most valuable because they look so pretty. Um, anyway, a lot of times these guitars, these jazz guitars, for, for you geeks out there, or non-geeks, this is, this is relevant to, to life in general. These jazz guitars are very often poached and their parts, their their parts are ripped out of them and put in newer version electric guitars, so that the young, so not the young, the contemporary players, people in living in the modern era, can experience as much as possible the way guitars were made in fifty eight, fifty nine, and sixty. For those who don't want to play hollow body guitars, I love this guitar because of, of all the gigs that I've done throughout my years, this guitar for someone for some reason has been my companion through some of my most pleasurable gigs. And uh, so I'm not sure why that is. I used to play this at a club in Jacksonville, Florida called Ragtimes. And I would play just full out rock stuff with it, Led Zeppelin to Anything from the meters to Led Zeppelin to you know, whatever. And it's not meant for, to, it's not, this thing is not meant to play Led Zeppelin on it. It's just, it resonates and it's got a wooden bridge. It's just, but it, I just loved, I think, I think I, I loved it because it wasn't meant for that. And it was fun just kind of trying to wrestle that sound out of it. But uh, good morning, this is Walter Parks coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri. For those of you who don't care about Christmas, uh, and, and, and there are many who are watching, I'm, 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 I don't apologize for being Christian, but I, I do apologize for the imagery that you have to look at. Um, and, uh, you know, I get it. And I'm, but this, I, it's, it's not that I'm like a, a super church guy, but it, we, 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 we like to do this. We that are grown, that come up in the Christian faith, uh, it, it gives us a certain feeling, a, a reminiscent feeling. It's a, a certain comfort that a marking of time, whether or not uh, you're, you're, you're a, a thick, devout Christian um the, the imagery and the pageantry of Christmas is, is kind of important. And, and I, have, I, have, I have Jewish friends who, I have Jewish friends who are not, who, who do, don't, don't really mind all of this. They, they just, it, it, it's, you know, they roll with it. And, and, uh, and um, I mean, I, I, the, truly, I, I think in, 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 in belief, I'm probably closer to the Jewish theology. I, I, I personally believe that, of course, Jesus ex existed. Nobody has a, not many people have a quarrel with that. But whether or not he is should be worshipped, or is the savior, is is another matter. And I I don't know, I I I, I have problems with that. And um, I don't think he wanted us to worship him. Um, regardless. You can learn a lot from his teachings, and it makes you think about how you're living your life. And uh, one of the things that Jesus missed out on, I'm pretty sure of it, was eggnog. You know, poor guy. But, um, you know, I, I invite everybody to get some eggnog this morning with me. And he probably, well, I wonder if Jesus had espresso, because... I mean, he probably did because they have some darn good coffee in the in the Middle East. Um, 
But uh, I know uh, one thing for sure is that Jesus never heard an electric guitar. I'm pretty darn sure of it. And so, you know, we can, we can, we can, and there's cause right there for, for maybe not worshiping him. And I, I'm just, I'm just joking, people. I'm just joking. I'm just having a little fun, a little Christmas fun, but I am going to have a sip of eggnog. But that does give me, um, it does give me um, the thought that I, well, two things. I want to talk about anticipation of the Christmas moment, if you will, the Christmas phenomenon. But I'm, I'm going to just say that I'm, I'm, I've been building up for about a month. I've been studying and rearranging and writing charts out for Christmas carols because Pastor David Denoon asked me to, and, and the music director, Leon Burke, in, in St. Louis here, uh, Webster Groves to be exact, asked me to be the music uh, for, for the ceremony. And I love Christmas carols. And um, so the, the Christmas Eve event, candlelight event is going to be I'm going to be the musical engine for that and I'm excited about it I, I, I take the role with respect and I'm working really really hard on this stuff and what I'm doing is I'm, I'm I don't I'm looking for a piece of sheet music that may be from the old days I'm just taking these old old charts and sort of rearranging them for the guitar best I can and I'm not really playing cowboy chords <laughs> doing that I'm not doing these you know down, you know down on the prairie kind of arrangements um, I'm really trying to listen to the way the old organists did in the churches with the great pipe organs in Europe and try to translate that to the guitar it's a, it's a lot of fun but it's it's tricky and the problem I'm, I'm a little nervous about it I mean I'm nervous but I know it's gonna be it's gonna be good I'm nervous about playing an evening of Christmas music because you can't mess up a Christmas song. You can't do it because it's, it's, it's like messing up Happy Birthday or the Star Spangled Banner. Everybody knows that you've messed it up. And if you're playing some, if you're playing Giant Steps or something, a jazz song, you, you know, people are... You know, if you miss a note or something, people just, oh, it's jazz. But there's, there's no jazz. You can't be doing, frankly, I have a problem with jazz interpretation. Jazz and Christmas carols, they just, I, I, I mm, keep them apart. I love jazz. But if, you know, the major third is okay guys in a Christmas carol just just don't play the college courts on top of that stuff it's sacred stuff that said now is the time for me to play a very jazzy version of a Christmas song it's not a carol and I want to say I'm not blowing any surprises for what you're going to see and hear and by the way I think they're going to live stream my event my event, my playing, my performing this Christmas Eve. I think that's going to be live streamed. You could look it up. Margo can maybe put a link if it's going to happen at all. But it's the first congregational church, which I think is UCC in Webster Groves, if it's going to happen. Anyway, and it's going to be 9, nine o'clock, I believe, which will be 10 o'clock Baltimore Standard Time. And, um, oh, so I was going to say, let me, let, so the reason I brought out the electric guitar today is that I am not going to play it during the service. I'm going to play all acoustic stuff, but it'll be through a PA and it'll sound like a pipe organ. Um, and the other is that some of these songs most of these songs I'm not going to play at the ceremony as well, service as well. So here's one such 
song. I'm not even going to go to the music because I. This is too complicated to read, so I'm going to just see what I can do here. Thank you. 
yourself a merry little Christmas. Uh, again, if you care about that sort of thing, and uh, regardless, you might have enjoyed this, sh this song. Uh, I think that was Mel Torme's uh, writing. Maybe he was just a singer of it. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong on that, but if he wrote that, what an incredible song. It's uh, tricky to solo over. I, I went for it a little bit, but then I had to mind the store um, quarterly and go back to it. But um, that's just a... It, that's an excuse, I guess. But it doesn't matter. I I'm really, really love playing that song. But that is one of those songs, in my opinion, it's fair game. Jazz it up. It's a Christmas song, not a carol. And I was, I was speaking with the pastor the other day about, you know, I, it seems sometimes that what churches are, are is a place that we, that we go to to experience uh, our spirituality in a proper way, whatever proper is. And, and the different churches have their own version of what the, what the protocol is to, to, to be spiritual. And, you know, there's, Many people would say, well, they don't need a church for that sort of thing. Um, their, their relationship with the, with the divine is theirs alone, and there's nobody that needs to be the ambassador for that, and that's fine. Um, but, but I find, found myself in preparing for this, this event to falling in, in, in step a little bit with, with some of those proprieties, and I was... I found myself going, yeah, you know, don't make that chord change just quite that hip, you know? I mean, it's like, it, I guess what I'm getting to is that we can spice something up and adorn something because of the, our abilities, our intellect, our, what we've studied. We can make something slick and fancy. And I find that in music producing too. These days, it's really easy to make something sound really big, you know? And then I find myself, the older I get, going like, no, hold on, pull it back, you know? Make it imply that bigness. And what I'm allowing myself to do with this, these Christmas carols is try to imply the grandeur of it without... Um, without the bleeding obvious, you know, without going for massive distortion on my effects pedals. And, I, you know, I one of the things I can't, I just am not a fan of, and I, yeah, I, I kind of always regret kind of burning things on, on my show, but I'm not, I don't, I'm not, I don't really care for, what's the, that touring, operation that where they play in arenas and they play Christmas music trans the trans meditation orchestra trans Siberian whatever it is it's just so it's like I, I just feel like there's nothing left to the imagination there and that's why I love playing the the electric guitar um, it's just so grand the way they do it and but the guitar there's so much left to to the imagination and my job and essentially my role in a church is a is a spiritual role i'm a little bit of an ambassador and i believe that if i can inspire the imagination of the listener if i can m maybe put their mind and ear and senses or their memory back into maybe their old times when Maybe it's genetic. Maybe they maybe they remember genetically what their great grandparents were listening to back in Germany or something. Then maybe I've done my job. Or maybe if if by just playing these two notes and maybe adding another one and still another. So here we go like come. Oh, oh, come, let us adore him. I was just playing two notes every time. And 
rather than this grand chords. Maybe I can inspire somebody to just kind of close their eyes and say, oh, life can be better and here's how it can be better. I want to, I guess if you just overwhelm people with the possibilities via your personality or the way you are, then there's nothing left for them to, there's nothing left for them to do. And as as an ambassador in a church, I don't want to insult people and give them everything. That's why I don't like about modern churches where there's full bands and movies behind the pulpit and all of that stuff. I don't like that. One of the best services I ever went to was my, my good friend Seth Keys, who was, was living in Cleveland, took me to a Quaker service. And that's a service that leaves a lot to the imagination. <clears throat> I mean, there was so much left to the imagination there wasn't a sermon. You just sat around and looked at each other. And that does not at all insult the congregation. That says the congregation, you have the power to put meaning and to bring meaning to this moment and to make your lives better. But anyway, enough of that preaching. There was something that I wanted to say, though. Um, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. So one thing I found about the electric guitar, and I was talking with director, music director Leon Burke about this in St. Louis, and, and I have to say, and he's, he's, he, he directs the, the University Synth City Symphony here in St. Louis, and he's, he's a genius, you know, I, I'm, that's not what I am, but, and he can write scores of music out and read all that stuff on site and everything, and I can't do that. But I said, I, I wonder if the guitar is actually, is, is, is more in keeping with what I value about the church experience. The, because the guitar leaves a lot to the imagination. Again, here's what I mean. If there's a melody on a sheet of music, and let's say it says middle C, then on the guitar, I can think of three places that you can play that note. On the piano, if it says middle C, that's where you play it, right there. There ain't no one, uh, and there's nowhere else to play it. If you're playing it up here, you're reading it an octave too high, or you're you're reading it, you're, you're playing it an octave too high, and it says to play the middle C. But on the guitar, there's one, there's there's more than one place to play that metal C, to play almost any note. So, as an interpreter of music, I have to decide where I'm going to play that note. But it's not arbitrary. It's not random. There is one best place to convey that grandeur to affect the audience in a positive or whatever way you're trying to affect the audience. There's one way, there's one way to play that chord. So if, for instance, I could play, a, if I play in a C chord, I can play it like that or, or, and they're all, they all have different vibes. This is what we call cowboy chord. And this is more like a power chord kind of, and this is a real power chord. And they all have their, you know, there may be even one more I'm missing. Um, yeah, how about this? Um, that's another way to do it. So that's four ways I could chord a C. But there's only one way to do it right. And that's what I love about taking songs by U2 or Radiohead or Led Zeppelin and trying to interpret them for the guitar because there's so many decisions I have to make. And it takes me forever. My buddy Stephen Baker in Jersey City, we talk about this. He works out Steely Dan songs and I work out all these other things. And he's like, people have no idea how much time this stuff takes. And yet it flies by in a three minute span. So I'm gonna play a song that um, I, I was trying to I was trying to uh, to pitch to the pastor, and um, 
you know, the pastor reminded me that this is this is a serious event. And uh, no, no, I mean, he, we, he, I, I love speaking with the pastor. And, um, but I, I wanted to throw in a Jimi Hendrix song called Angel in the middle of the, of the, the Christmas uh, program. Why? Because the angels keep, they play a role in this story. They keep coming down and, and saying, look, Joseph, let me let me tell you this. I mean, maybe I, I'm not sure. Like, I'm I'm a terrible interpreter of the biblical anything biblical. But just roll with me for a second. The angels come down and they say to Joseph, "Look, your wife is is pregnant. Hold, hold on, don't don't leave her. Don't don't give her up. She's got she's she's got the divine she's got a divine savior inside of her, and you got to stand by her. And just it's everything's gonna be okay. Now maybe maybe listeners out there in Streamland, maybe it wasn't an angel, but at some point angels came around. The angels might have gone to the shepherds. You, you get my point. So I decided I'm gonna play Angel by Jimi Hendrix and. Um, we thought better of it because there are so many, so many really great carols that would represent that moment. That so this is not going to get played in the in the service. But this is the kind of thought I put into this sort of thing, and I wanted to do Jimi Hendrix because I thought his song "Angel" would be at least instrumentally uh, kind of a new twist, something that people hadn't heard for. On a, on a Christmas Eve service, and uh, but uh, suffice it for now. It's just going to be for now. Let's see if I can do this. I don't know if I really can, but I mean, I'm certainly going to sing it, and I know I can do that. <laughs> instrumentally I wouldn't sing it in a in the church at least not on Christmas Eve angel came down from heaven yesterday Long enough to rescue me, and she told me a story yesterday about the sweet love between the moon and the deep blue sea. She's gonna come back, she's gonna come back tomorrow. Oh, black, oh, my sweet angel. Thank you. 
sure enough that morning came to me silver wings silhouetted against the pale sunrise yesterday and um but what the part of it you some of you if you tune in regularly to me you might you might have heard me play angel but the part of it or you might have heard me sing it but i've never worked out that chord melody and but but even for even for working out uh taking a rock song as I was referring to earlier with Led Zeppelin, and even doing that on, on an electric guitar, just for the manifestation of playing it instrumentally without the vocals, it's tricky, you know? And um, so, so in a sense, I've become the, it's kind of a, a Bobby Short at the at the Carlisle version of rock music in a sense, and I, but I'm fine with that. Some someday when I'm older, maybe I'll have a gig where I'm I'm on a platform in a tuxedo just playing all these Jimi Hendrix songs instrumentally, and it'll be fine. I hope you're enjoying it. This is uh, Hymns and Hollers. That was a version of Angel, a, ver a version of Jimi Hendrix's Angel. And um, I, I was gonna do that for the for the service this uh, this coming Friday night, but I uh, I decided uh, I'll be more reverent and and, and just play the, the old carols. Um, but uh, I have I want I, I want to ask y'all. Let me know because I can see some of the comments. What was y'all for those? of you who celebrated Christmas in your in your youth. For me at least, it was I, I can say that the most the best things about Christmas for me were there were two things that were the best. And they were both on this in the same day and it wasn't Christmas Day. It was Christmas Eve. I I was I was so excited when I was a little kid, of course, about the concept that Santa was flying through the air in a in a sleigh with reindeer. And my father always encouraged me when I was a, since I was just young enough to deal with logic and abstract thinking and so on to 
to understand, to have a sense of direction and to know where things were in relation to each other. And so it was, it was a good thing to know. But the problem was, you know, my father, I, I, I think when I was four years old, five years old, he was, he was taking me out to, I'd go out with him to, to take photographs of trains, which we used to do. And we'd be out in the woods and, but you could see one thing coming above the, the pine trees in the distance. And that would be a water tower or a steeple. And he would say, Walter, so which way is town? If you were lost right now, which way would you go? Where would you go towards town? And I would, at first when I was a kid, I'd, I would look around and I'd go, well, I, I don't know. I'd follow the railroad tracks. And he'd go, well, yeah, but which direction on the tracks? And then I would, and he would say, look at that water tower over there. That's town. More than likely, if there's nothing else peering above the tips of those trees, then that's town. Or look at that steeple. That is town because that steeple's not going to be in the middle of nowhere. So you always you always look up. So my problem with the Christmas story, I couldn't figure out how Santa could service all these children. I could how could he possibly service the children in Webster Groves, Miss, uh, Missouri, which is where I'm broadcasting from. And and get all of my my all of my future friends in Jersey City in Long Island in New York City and all of my friends in Jacksonville Florida which is where I grew up how could he do all of that in one night the logistics of it you know I I knew there were I knew that there were women involved and and that women were behind the scenes because the I, I always found women to be so good and practical and, and grounding, and there was must have been women behind the scenes planning this, the routing. Kind of. And I pictured this, you know, from when you used to see those room full of ladies sewing and building America, essentially, especially when the men went off to war. The, the women were always really holding it together. They were the epoxy, and I knew that there were... A, a room full of women somewhere just in the North Pole just planning the logistics of all of this and coordinating and cross-referencing which kids needed which presents and which towns they were in and how we had to, when Santa had to leave to deliver all this and how fast he had to work. And at, at a certain point, I just, I could not, I, I, could, I just started to disbelieve it because, because, because of the logistics of it. But anyway, but the anticipation of it was, I always had great Christmas mornings. I mean, we had nice presents under the trees that my parents struggled to provide, but it was wonderful. I mean, the night before was wonderful, the anticipation. And the other thing, the other number, num number two, uh, let me look at the comments just a little bit. I'm going to lean towards the camera and maybe I'll get the... No, nobody's talking about like they're just talking about my hairdo or something probably um oh the second most favorite event regarding christmas for me was the candlelight service the night before and i wasn't a particularly religious kid but i just loved the ritual of all of that i loved going in late and i loved burning those little wax candles and on that paper holder and trying to avoid getting the hot wax on your hand and um all of these things are silly in a certain way aspects of the of the modern world the the little pencils that you would find in the pews in front of you and and trying in vain to read the music from the hymnals and and do all that while you had a light in your hand and I, I don't know it just didn't it was it was awkward and but it was wonderful and I'm so 
happy to be a part of a service this weekend um, or the, this this coming Friday. So y'all tune in if you can. I've worked really hard on these arrangements, and it's uh, I am going to be singing it one song in French and uh, and some in English, but most of it's just instrumental guitar playing, which I love. So I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna finish off with uh, with a couple of things. Um, get you some eggnog over the season. This this stuff is is really healthy. It's great for you. Um, yeah, there is this thing called lactose intolerance. I can't be responsible for everybody. Uh, issues. I can just say that this cup of eggnog is fantastic and it's absolutely I mean it seems like it's just straight from the teat. It just seems like I mean this is just as natural as it can get. Now this brings up another pro uh, point these little coasters here that a lot of times in this season we put our eggnog on. These coasters are actually CDs that I guarantee you will bring you plenty of pleasure if you will just purchase one or purchase one for your friends. And we can, at this point, I don't know if we can even send something out to arrive at your house uh, in time for Christmas, but we can print you up something that's kind of nice, and um, we'll try. We'll go to the mailbox tomorrow if you'll order one today. Well, this is called Cathedral. It's my solo acoustic live CD, and Walter Parks and the Unlawful Assembly. And we have we have some of those. We've got we've got everything ready. We've got T-shirts, and uh, help support if you can. Um, we can send them off tomorrow, and we will brave the lines at the post office for you. Um, I want to conclude with one song that I just worked up yesterday, which is risky. But... <laughs> Parks, uh, this has been Hymns and Hollers, this is, uh, I'm thinking about taking a break after, uh, uh, after next week, and uh, maybe uh, just kind of holding up and working on some new materials through the winter, but I I'll let y'all know, it's, it's kind of fun to do these every Sunday morning, um, and it's, um, but uh, I've got so much musical work to do, and I, I kind of want to practice it and get it good before I show it to y'all. But there is some value to just workshopping this stuff, uh, warts and all, so to speak. Seems like there's something I wanted to share with y'all. Oh, I am coming to Paltney, Vermont in January, soon actually, so I guess that would be in a couple of weeks, two or three weeks, January 15th, so it's about a month, I guess, and that's Paltney, Vermont, with Rob Curto, my partner, who we kind of do this Swamp Appalachian thing, Appalachian Reels, Meet My Swampy Treatments, he plays accordion, I play guitar, most of it's acoustic, and also, two nights before, we're going to be at uh, the Fox and Crow in Jersey City. Um, and uh, I'm coming to New York to do some studio work, and I thought I'd put those live shows in on the schedule. And stay safe in the COVID, everybody. Um, let's see if I can do this one here.
performance acoustically of these songs uh, on uh, on Friday night uh, for the candlelight service because you can't mess up a Christmas carol it's not it's it's un, it's ungodly actually the Lord will not look down on one uh, in good favor so m- my my uh, my status my spiritual status is on the line. So, you know, much like going to the cir- circus and walk, watching the trapeze artists walk the tightrope or w- watching the human be hurled from the, the cannon and wondering, are they going to land in the net? That could be, if for no other reason, that could be a perfect reason to tune in to Friday night just to see if I play these songs in keeping with the Lord. And I'm, I'm, I'm joking around in a way, but I'm really trying to do a very, very good job because I take this music and this role very seriously, and I'm so excited to be doing it. And part of it is I've always wanted to make a record of Christmas music on guitar. Not singing, just instrumental. And I'm going to do it next year, but this is my final year of preparation for it. Um, Walter Parks, Hymns and Hollers. Thanks to Margot. She's, she works the soundboard, and uh, she's the best sound woman I know. And she she knows what I, what I need sound wise. We have more mics and gadgets than you need for a guitar, but um, again, if we're talking about the Lord, I think the Lord the Lord invented microphones, so I think he or she wants us to use them. Uh, there's a mic here. There's a mic on the F hole of this jazz guitar. There's a direct signal. There's an amplifier. There's an old 1959 Supro Super Amp that I bought from Gary Smalley in Jacksonville, Florida. It's a lap steel amp. What else can I tell you about geekdom? 
I feel all the broadcast, I felt like I wanted to say something. And I just can't dig it out. So, regardless, stay tuned. We're, we we may, I may do, if, if, the, if the Christmas Eve thing goes well, I may do some more music on Christmas Day. Um, but I kind of doubt that I'll be doing that. Um, but stay tuned. Am I getting the mood? Thanks. This is Walter Parks, Hymns and Hollers. We've got one more of these this year. And then, uh, then I might take a break for a while. But um, thanks again for tuning in. And uh, see you next week. Pick up the CD if you can. Margo's put up the, uh, the links. And it's available on my website. I hope you've enjoyed my arrangements and my interpretations. I've enjoyed playing them for you today. Goodbye.